This is Wendy on Burton Street. Today we have a special guest for Burton Street. He's just a chef to come on down. How are you? Hello, how are you doing? It's very nice to be in Radio Burton Street and to be chatting to you all. We are you, Neil Shearson. How long have you been playing? I've been playing guitar since I was about 21 years old. So about 25 years now. Yes, yeah, started playing in bands from the age of kind of my mid twenties. Uh, started doing a lot of gigs and playing at a lot of festivals, and uh, that was all all really good fun. But in terms of being a musician, this job coming to Bourbon Street, it's the first interview I'd ever had, job interview I had, where they said, "I hear that you're interested in music and that you're a musician. Can you tell us a little bit more about?" And so when I first came to Burton Street, that was the main thing that I did, was be in music sessions and enjoy all that shit. Yeah. yeah, I played in a sort of 10-piece ska band with a few of my mates for many years. And we went, to, we played lots of festivals at Glastonbury and Edinburgh and all, wow. over, all over the country, gigs abroad. Uh, and it was just really good fun. So Bison is the name of that 10-piece ska band. Have heard of it? No, no one's ever heard of it. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's a li- it, we did all right in Sheffield, and you can go on to Spotify and listen to lots of our albums. And in our own little way, we we kind of made it because we had a lot of fun and we really enjoyed playing gigs together. I mean, the biggest gig we've ever played there's a there was a guy called Lee Scratch Perry, uh, mm. who was a, a he's a like a reggae and dub um, dubstep guy from Jamaica. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we played a festival where there was only one main stage room and there were probably about 20,000 people at the festival. So we were on just before him uh, on the main stage on Saturday night and a lot of that festival turned up. So there was probably about 10,000 people watching us on that night. Uh, and we played we played a little bit with Madness and Sport of the Levelers and lots of different stuff. So really, some like bands of my childhood that I really loved. Suddenly, we were starting to play in some of those bands, uh, which was fantastic. So no one ever really has heard of us, um, except in kind of the scenes that we kind of the party scenes that we were playing in. Um, but yeah, to play with some of those people was, was amazing. Tell us about your philosophy of life. Philosophy of life. Whoa, Whoa. this is getting into the big stuff, oh. isn't it? Hey, eh? this is getting to the nub of it all. Well. The first thing I suppose I should say is that I'm a practicing Buddhist. So I, from the age of about 40, I started going to the Buddhist centre. Um, and I suppose really, uh, in terms of philosophy of life, what I think is really important to me is just uh, is compassion and kindness for, for other human beings. But not just for other human beings, for all the beings that live on the planet. I do a lot of meditation, which makes you kind of more aware of the present moment. Make sure that I can be the best person that I can be, but so that I can help other people out, really. And in terms of doing a job that I really love... Coming to Burton Street, being with you guys, and spending time with all of you lot, that kind of really fits in with my philosophy of life, because it means that I can help you out, and to be honest, most of the time, it's you helping me out. I love coming to a job where uh, it's just full of really interesting people who have an amazing outlook on life, and they just make me laugh all the time. When I come into work, you guys, you just make me, you just really cheer me up. And so the way that you treat me is often, it's really the way that I, that I want to treat other people. So that's kind of my philosophy of life. But I've been working here 12 and a half years now. And it's ama- that's amazing to think that, you know, I can get up every day and want to come into work. Wow. What is your favourite bowl? Lovely. That's a funny one, that. Because it used to be sausage, chips, and beans for my life. Yeah, yeah. you like also you like Sam's. you love your reggae, uh, you love your Bob Marley uh, food as well, don't you? My Bob Marley food. What's Bob Marley food? <laughs> it's like Jamaica, <laughs> Jamaica sauce, reggae reggae sauce. So I'm a, I've got a bit of a weird <laughs> thing where I've got diagnosed as a celiac, which means that I can't eat barley, wheat, rice, and lots of bread and pasta and all that sort of things I struggle with. 
And also, it's in a lot of other stuff as well, like a lot of sausages and things like that have that sort of, have that sort of thing in it. But also, because I'm a Buddhist, uh, I became vegan two or three years ago, which means that I can't have anything with any animal products in, so no dairy, no meat, anything like that. So, um, my favourite food, Lynn, has, yeah. cha has changed over the years. It yeah. used to be sausage, yes. chips and beans. It went to steak and chips when I, became a, when I was a celiac, uh, but I was still eating meat. And now, to be honest, uh, like a really nice uh, vegetable Chinese stir fry. Is absolutely bang on. That is where I'm at. But I still do have, so I found a really good vegan uh, gluten-free sausage. So sausage, chips and beans are still <laughs> still pretty good. <laughs> on yeah, still no, I doubt about that. No, I doubt about that. Yeah, my mum used yeah. to cook it for me every Friday, so it's also got happy yeah. connotations of like it being the weekend. So it always feels like, when, when it was my birthday, in my 20s, I'd always get someone to cook me sausage, chips and beans for my birthday. So, Same yeah, evening. I'm a cheap date, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, mate, yeah. I think you've made Lynn hungry, she's got yeah. biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long have you been working here? Oh, yeah, so I did mention it briefly, but 12 and a half years. Yeah. Whoa. So, um... I did some rubbish jobs in my twenty. I worked for HSBC at a call centre. I worked for the accounts department in a kind of a, a mattress factory for a year. I did all sorts of rubbish in my twenties. Yeah. Um, but Bur coming to Burton Street when I was just at, just after thirty, that was it's just been brilliant. And I started as a project worker and team leader, assistant manager, and kind of worked my way up. Uh, which has kept that job interesting for me, really. But yeah, 12 and a half of the best years of your life. Wow. I think any anything that you do in life, you've got to find something that, that you feel good about doing and that you find interesting and enjoyable and fun, hopefully. And I've just always... I've never, I've never worked uh, sort of with people with learning difficulties before. Uh, and when I came to work here, but I just I found I just found it really easy and natural, and just found it really easy to get on with everyone, and, and, and I thought it was really fun. It's just fun, and 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 really nice to spend time with you all. So it was this job was everything that those other jobs wasn't. They really. used to watch the clock, look for the clock, just wait till it was five o'clock, and then just get out of there. Uh, and now it's sort of hours fly past them. And uh, you know the day goes really quickly. So because this is where we are now, this is where we are. This is like home. Well, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, that I think you've said it all there in sort of how I how I feel about coming to Berkshire. If you guys feel like that, then it means that we're doing our job properly. Uh, so it's really nice to hear that. Hi, Jamie. Nice to see you. Where were you born? I was born. Uh, thanks for the question, Jamie. I was born in Oxford. Uh, which, Oxford? Yeah, nice. which is near to where my parents live now. They had a lot of ties in Oxford. They had a lot of friends. Uh, my dad was, at the time, was minister, he's a Baptist minister. So he was Baptist minister for one of the universities in Oxford. So um, that's where I lived till I was about four years old. So not very long, but it's where I was born. We're, as a family, we moved up to Burnley. It, people sort of say, where, did you, where are you from? I'd kind of say I'm from Burnley. Uh, I feel like Sheffield's home, but I was born in Oxford, brought up in Burnley, and, and now I've lived in Sheffield for 30 years, and it really is, it does feel like I'm home, definitely. Um, but I also went to boarding school in Sussex, so I was uh, not sent to boarding school, but I spent quite a bit of my time in the south of England as well. So that was uh, that was a really good part of my life. But when I left school, I knew I wanted to come up north. I've always felt like a northerner, uh, so I went to university in Sheffield and, and, and never left. Which actor should you play in a film? version of your life. It's tricky, tricky on that. I have absolutely no idea. Oh, uh, has anyone got any ideas you, you think? You could be like uh, James Bond of Love 7. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so that's, that's immediately what I thought. You know, <laughs> oh, sophisticated. Shaking um, <laughs> So Daniel Craig, is that you saying? 
to play my line. I don't know, there probably needs to be someone who could do a bit of a, could play a bit of music as well. Um, Laura got her money on Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, yeah. Oh, there you go, that's all right, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'd take Johnny Depp because he's got the I've got the sort of Captain Jack Sparrow sort of uh, facial hair going on. Uh, so maybe that, or maybe I don't know whether any of you can remember Timothy Claypole from Rent a Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or if you get a picture of his face up, I'm pretty sure that is actually me in a former life. So somewhere I'm going to say Daniel Craig meets Timothy Claypole. <laughs> So what, is your, what, so what do you think you should be in, like a right good actor, yeah? you come down in a right nice suit and you think, you know what, I'm going to do something right here, let me make something. And it just, just makes you absolutely quite wrong. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, do you know what, I've always, I actually always wanted to act. It's one of the things that, it, you know, you have, a, you, you have a wish list of stuff you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. I have a massive wish, I've always been one of those people who's, well, there's loads of stuff that, I, that I'd really like to have done. And uh, it's not like it's too late or anything, it's just yeah, you prioritise things. And uh, I suppose music for me became a priority. But I've always liked the idea of acting, so maybe I should maybe I should play myself. So <laughs> it's, the only, it's the only it's the only way I'm going to get a, a starring Star role. role. <laughs> it's the only one who's going to be prepared to play a, 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 my life story. It's me. And what football team do you support? Good question, Peter. And it's not a it's not a simple one. So when I was, uh, in 1985, Everton played against Man United in the cup final. So I supported Everton for that game. And from that moment on, for the next 10 years, I absolutely loved Everton Football Club. And my, my son's got an Everton kid. Oh. Yeah, go on. Excuse me. Uh, Everton? Oh, they just United. Yeah. And you go, why don't we do it off of oh. one? And when the new season st starts, Do go over right? to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and when the, the, the Do you know what, Peter? At the time, Everton were a better team than Man United, but I wish I had done that with Man United. Do you get what I mean? I might have been a happier football fan. Do you, do you get what you mean? I do get what you mean, but this is the thing about yes. football, isn't it? Yes. You're supposed to nail so your what? colours to the match. I agree with you that. But it was. I was just thought. It's a good. Uh, why, why shouldn't we? We should suggest that to a few United and Wednesday <laughs> fans and see how they feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, one season for it's, one and one season for the other. You know what? It's the same as what we will both both tell you. So I think, so, so I think you've hit on. I've hit, I think you've hit on the dream scenario. Yeah, there. You, you're going to unify the whole city. So, football, it's one of those emotive subjects, football, and it does it does stir people up. So when I I, I said before I was brought up in Burnley, so as soon as I could start going to football games, because I didn't live in Liverpool and I couldn't really go and see Everton, I used to go and start I started going to see Burnley games, and then when you start actually seeing the team, and they weren't very good then, Burnley, they were they they were pretty pretty poor side. But I loved, I got really into like that atmosphere of the football pitch. What about? And so I supported Burnley for a long time. But ultimately, I've got to a point in my life where I just, I don't care about football. Because it's just been, there are lots of aspects of football that I love. I love the game of football. But there's lots of things about football that I don't like. And I think generally the kind of attitude on the terraces, the way that uh, money has just completely ruined the game, I think is a real problem. So the, the, when I, the only time I get really excited about football anymore is when England are playing in the tournament. Me too. Because it kind of feels like, do you know what? It's actually not about how much money you've got. It's about the 11 best players that you've got that happen to have been born in your country. Yeah. And so I, I sort of like that. Sorry, Peter, go What about the local clubs? Well, i tell you what, Sheffield, so I live closest to Sheffield United, all right? Yes. And I've taken my boy to a couple of games there because yeah. I feel like that's yeah. the local club. Yeah. I, know, I know I work in Hillsborough, but yeah. I would I, take my kids to United. But Sheffield FC, who are the oldest football club in the country, 
are building a little stadium out in Meadowhead, and that's really close <laughs> to where I live. And in terms of taking my boy to some football games, I think I think I'd be tempted to take him there because it'd be like four or five quid to go and see a game. Yeah, what? Proper football. I get what you're talking about. Who you're do right. you support? Who do you support? Please? I see you have seen them. I see you what? I've seen them. Sheffield United. He was, he was that. <laughs> well then, Pete, what about if you support Sheffield United for this season and then next season go to Sheffield Wednesday? What do you reckon, Pete? What do you think, Pete? I do. Off and off, yeah. yeah. You got to go came with Kane. There you go. That, do you know what? That's the most... <laughs> I can't believe you said that. But hey, I have you. I think I've just, just you know, you, you, you've pacified people. You know, yeah, right. you know. you've, 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 you've been you've been swayed by your own idea. What was it like playing Glastonbury? Well, I tell you what. The first time I went to Glastonbury was two thousand and three, and if someone had told me that four years later I was coming back with a band, because at that time I'd only just started playing the guitar, someone had told me I was coming back with a load of my mates to play <coughs> several gigs at Glastonbury. I just I don't know what I've done. I don't I don't know whether any of you's ever been to Glastonbury. No, no. But it's like and it, I felt like, to me like I was landing on an alien planet with like all of my favourite things in, in one place at once. And just do, do you know what people? If you say you play in Glastonbury, people start taking you seriously. It's like my parents. I remember saying to my parents, "I'm going to play Glastonbury." And they were like, "Really?" And it sort of it was a big thing for them, and it was a big thing for us. And the second time we played Glastonbury, we played there three or four times. The second time is madness did a sequel gig just after us on the on the stage we were on, and that that was like a magical moment in my life. I loved Madness when I absolutely loved them, and to be playing Glastonbury, playing at Glastonbury <laughs> just before them, which felt like a really really special special time. Festivals, when they're done right, it's almost like they're, they're showing you a different way to be, to live. Because uh, you just so much of life is getting a job and buckling down and paying your bills and doing all the things that you need to do. And, you, and sort of you're told not that being creative and playing music and doing art and all those sort of things don't really matter and aren't going to get you anywhere. That's kind of what people say to you. And when you go to places like Glastonbury, you can see there's just so many people that make their living doing really interesting, creative stuff. And it really opened my eyes to the possibilities of, of being able to do that. And so when I say, when I came here and I started using my music to, 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 to do my job at Bourbon Street, part of that was festivals kind of going, no, 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 stick with all of this. This is amazing. There's so many opportunities for you. Uh, and I think it's just a really valuable thing to have. So I always take my kid, well, take my kids to festivals because it's starting to open up their eyes. My 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 daughter loves uh, writing poetry. She's just starting to play the guitar. And when we first went to Glastonbury, we walked on, we walked in there, and there was a a, a, a man in woman's clothes doing falsetto opera singing in a kind of massive bird cage. <laughs> and, it's just, and, my daughter, and my daughter just said Dior just sort of dropped down to her feet and this is the first thing we saw when we walked into the field and it's just it's just really nice in, in terms of like equality and diversity and just like anything goes you know you shouldn't be looking down on anyone because they look different or they sound different that's, that's what makes life interesting sleeves up is it roll your sleeves up time yes tell us about your family oh what a lovely way to what a nice question to end on so I've got two kids one called Eliza my daughter who's 11 years old who's just started secondary school so that's suddenly like whoa how did that happen uh, and my little boy Henry who's 8 years old and do you know I don't know why I knew that I wanted to be a dad. And I remember when I met my wife, Jess, one of the first things we asked each other is whether we wanted kids. Uh, and it's been brilliant being a, being a parent. There are things about it which are really, really hard. And they push you to the absolute limit. Um, but I, want, I think I wanted to experience in life, I wanted to experience the kind of everything that life had to offer. And for me... 
kids help you to sort of uh, find out where you are with stuff? I think no, even with your partner, no matter how much you love your partner, you, with your kids, you've properly got to put someone before yourself for the first time in your life. Like, you are no longer the most important thing. And actually, I think there's something really beautiful about that. And it, may, it makes you realise you're not the centre of the universe. Uh, and so, and, and also, all the difficult stuff you go through, when, when you look back on it, it's actually, it's that stuff that makes it all worthwhile. Uh, so I'm, I've really enjoyed all stages of parenthood, really, apart from probably the first year, when they're really little babies, I found them pretty tough. Um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying them growing up now, and I'm looking forward to the, knowing them as adults as well when they grow up. I think that, that's going to be lovely. Yeah, meeting my wife, Jess, and, and having our two kids is, is, um, is, again, is one of the best things that's happened to me. I'm really, really grateful. All right, great question. Thanks, thanks for asking that. I said I came in here at the beginning and said uh, I said to Andy, I said I'm, I'm going to nip into Radio Bedroom just doing an interview. Uh, I shouldn't be more than ten or fifteen minutes. And he nearly, he nearly choked on his lunch because I think he realised that I don't think I've ever I've ever spoke for as little as ten or fifteen. Minutes. So we're, probably, we're probably up to about like, what are we up to? Forty-five minutes or something. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for having me.